Slavery did not end with the Emancipation Proclamation. Many people have argued that slavery did not end with the passage of the 13th Amendment. The newly freed men, women, and children, they were hardworking and they were inspired and they were totally focused on transforming their lives and their country. Today it seems that uh, we are being driven backwards by right-wing mob and politicians. Juneteenth is more than a holiday. It is not just a commemoration of the end of slavery. It is a day that celebrates America's incredible capacity to self-correct by applying the timeless principles at our country's core. Juneteenth is a time to reflect on the past and celebrate our freedom while we realize we still have work to be done to become a more diverse and inclusive community. There are some great community and nonprofit organizations around, so get involved. Thank you to the Juneteenth Committee, to all the town departments that made this possible. Uh, thank you all for coming, taking the time out to join us today. Make sure you get a souvenir, a raffle ticket, and enjoy the delicious food. Let's have a blast. How, happy Freedom Day. <laughs> My name is Ada Uzuebu. Coming from back home, I'm from Nigeria. So coming to know when our ancestors got their independence, it really means a lot for us because people fought for us to be here today. I'm really happy that I'm here today. I can do this. I just like how diverse we are and like how much like how different we are. So we all we can all share some similarities, but we also have our differences. So that's why I like about us. Well, Juneteenth is when a lot of uh, freed people and you know formerly enslaved people found out about their freedom and so it's significant to sort of you know remember that history of where we've been and sort of where we're moving to and I like the fact that uh, a day that has been fairly well recognized in the African-American community is becoming sort of more widely acknowledged like my office for instance I'm not at work because I work for Boston University and it's a holiday that everyone has off today and so it's nice that it gets that recognition. Hello everyone. So now I'd like to introduce our first guest. Founded in 1994, Origination Cultural Arts Center provides high quality arts, education, and leadership programs to develop self-esteem, physical fitness, civic responsibility among youth ages two through 18. Origination's primary focus is to serve African-American and Latino youth in the Boston area, but all youth are welcome. Now everyone, please help me give a round of applause and a warm welcome for the origination.
good Juneteenth afternoon on this beautiful day here at the uh, Brookline Avenue Park. I'm Bernard Green, chair of the select board and also a member of the Juneteenth committee and I bring greetings from the town and from the select board. I wanna acknowledge the uh, great support that we've received from town departments. Uh, Parks and Recreation, uh, DPW, Fire Department, the Police Department, and I want to specific, specifically acknowledge our new Police Chief, Jen Pastor, uh, who, who has been uh, the permanent Police Chief for the last, what, four months now, and she's done a great job. And also the Diversity, Inclusion, Community, or the Office of Diversity, Inclusion, and Community Relations. So thank you for making this uh, event a success as you have in past years uh, when we've had Juneteenth events. My job today is to offer uh, some meaning and maybe some history for this occasion so that when we leave, we can be better uh, aware of the meaning of Juneteenth and hopefully enable, enable us to more effectively deal with issues that come up in our lives and in our communities. And of course, I'm also, I also want you to have a lot of fun today. As you see, there's a lot of things for the kids to do. They're tense with information and music. Okay. At our meeting on June 13th, the select board passed a proclamation, a Juneteenth proclamation, that goes into some of the reasons why Juneteenth is an important holiday. Slavery did not end with the Emancipation Proclamation, which only applied to those enslaved people in the states of the Confederacy over which Union forces were able to exert control. And slavery did not end on June 19, 1865, when General Granger entered Galveston, Texas and issued his uh, general order, which was notice of the Emancipation Proclamation to the people of Texas, the most western part of the Confederacy. That is the origin of Juneteenth, but was not the end of slavery. And slavery did not end in the states of Missouri, Kentucky, Delaware, and Maryland, even with the Emancipation Proclamation, which were slaveholding states that remained in the Union, so therefore were outside the reach of the Emancipation Proclamation. And, believe it or not, and shockingly, many people have argued that slavery did not end with the passage of the 13th Amendment, which has a loophole that I call big enough to drive a chain gang through. And I urge you to take the time to read the 13th Amendment and see what I'm talking about. But good news, recently in Congress, uh, Congress uh, uh, Senator Cory Booker Senator uh, uh, Melvy of uh, Oregon and uh, Representative Williams of Georgia introduced legislation to fix that loophole. Hopefully it will get somewhere eventually, although it's not really certain that it's gonna get, it, get anywhere anytime soon. But it is hope to end that loophole in the 13th Amendment that allows you to drive a chain gang through it and I'm referring to chain gangs for a specific way. So read the amendment, read the history, and learn something that's very important. This year I wanna briefly focus on what is particularly inspiring about Juneteenth and its aftermath, and the people who were freed uh, eventually, partially, <laughs> by uh, the Emancipation Proclamation. And that story is the response is the response of the newly freed African-American citizens to this new day for them. General Order Number 3 uh, that uh, General Granger uh, issued included some racist stereotypes about black people that uh, are newly freed uh, black people that I think are important for us to think about and reflect on. And those stereotypes uh, suggested that they were inclined towards idleness and warning them that idleness would not be tolerated. Now, idleness of black people is sort of a trope that has, has, has remained a problem over many, many centuries. We're supposed to be lazy and idle, et cetera. And that you know, was so ingrained into the thinking of many people that it was part of the general order of General Granger. The newly freed men, women, and children were far from being Granger's stereotype. 
They were hardworking and they were inspired and they were totally focused on transforming their lives and their country. They immediately took advantage of the rights that they were, were given by reuniting families, establishing schools, developing communities and self-help organizations around them, running for political office, legislating in office, suing slaveholders for compensation, and doing an incredible job. These black former enslaved people doing an incredible job of rebuilding the American ideals. That is until re reaction set in uh, towards the end of the 18th century. But rebuilding the American ideals, making the words of the Declaration of Independence real, not just words. They immediately and enthusiastically elected governors and senators and representatives at the federal and local levels. Those elected officials passed laws that were models <coughs> of forward thinking, modern legislation. They were simple and unschooled people, but many of them understood in ways that many of our educated people of today don't understand the importance of education, and they instilled those values in their children. They organized schools, and with the help of Northern supporters, particularly Quakers, they built schools to teach each other how to teach others. One of those schools I'd like to mention, just as a personal matter, <coughs> was the Schofield Normal and Industrial School in Aiken, South Carolina founded and financed by a Quaker woman, Martha Schofield. And that's important to me because my grandmother attended the Schofield Normal and Industrial School and learned to teach and went out and taught. Today, it seems that uh, we're being driven backwards by right-wing mobs and politicians, the Supreme Court, and racist, anti-Semitic, anti-LGBTQ, anti-Asian, and in short, anti-human trends in America. And that can be demoralizing. Juneteenth can be an antidote to that demoralization, the demoralization of current events. <clears throat> and can help us to understand the structure of the arc of the moral universe. Ms. Opal Lee, a 95-year-old former teacher and activist and considered the grandmother of Juneteenth <clears throat> in an opinion piece last year in the Washington Post said, Juneteenth is more than a holiday. It is not just a commemoration of the end of slavery. It is a day that celebrates America's incredible capacity to, to self-correct by applying the timeless principles at our country's core. Yeah, I think that's an important observation by Ms. Opal Lee a sage insight from a woman who had lived, who has lived, because she's still alive, through 10 decades of the ebbs and flows of American society, including in her case, in 1939, having her family's home burned by marauding racist rioters. But she is still optimistic. She is not demoralized. And let us learn a lesson from that. America goes through its ebbs and flows Sometimes we're improving and finding justice. Other times we're slipping back. <clears throat> and what we can't do is let that cause us to lose sight of the moral arc of the universe, which is tending towards justice. So to conclude, Martin Luther King, paraphrasing the words of a 19th century abolitionist, often said the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. <clears throat> I will correct that to say that the arc of the moral universe is long, but the arc is not uniform. Its movement is not steady. It frequently ebb, ebbs towards injustice, even while it flows towards justice. So let us enjoy Juneteenth on this beautiful day and relish the food, the music, and the camaraderie, and reflect on how we can use the lessons of Juneteenth to fight the ebbs and enhance the flows until, as Martin Luther King said, 
Justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Thank you. My name is Golela, and I will be presenting a poem called African Girl. What's so great about being a young, talented, and intelligent African girl? Well, I hope you have some time, because this is greater than your dime. I come from a line of kings and queens who believe in Emoja by any means. Kuji Chakulia was never a question. As always, self-determination was and is our destination. To define, to think, and to name myself was a blessing I received from God himself. I'm learning to work collectively and responsibly for myself and my people. So take heed in what I'm saying, because I am your equal. Thank you. So this next song for Juneteenth, um, I made this song in reflection of who I am, right, as a black queen. We've come a long way. We've come a long way. So I'm grateful for my ancestors for fighting for us to have the opportunities and freedom we have today and tomorrow. And this song is dedicated to them. Go ahead. This song is called Black Queens. Uh, Nancy, uh, Ooh. Smoke house. Smokehouse. Yeah. Shout out to all my black queens. It's Juneteenth, baby. Black queen. I am a black queen, black queen, black queen. All of this melanin dripping, get some popping. Rocking my features, thick thighs, thick lips. Four C hair and a got my mama hip. Loving my skin, ooh, I'm loving my skin. Ooh, I can't deny that I am a 10. I am the culture. Cop cats, vultures, they appropriate, but can never be the culture. I know I look good and my beauty is divine. Little black girls need to say we gon' shine. And everywhere we go, gotta hold your head up high. But black girl magic is a four step aside. 400 years, I'm 400 years. We made it through the word saying. Yes, we still here, but the struggle isn't over, so we gon' keep pushing. Ain't no way we gon' lose. Black queens keep pushing on. Black queen, black queen, black queen. I am a black queen. Black. 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 I am a black queen. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Donnell O'Neill Sr., town meeting member from Precinct 4, this precinct, and I'm also in the advisory committee. So about three years ago, a group of our neighbors, you see some around here, started, um, want, wanted, wanted to make a difference. We got tired of going to Franklin Park and celebrating Juneteenth outside of Brookline, Mass., when there's black and brown folks here who, accept, who expect the same thing as everyone else. So I'm gonna keep it short. I just wanna say thank you everyone for attending. I wanna thank the founding folks who started this three years ago and for the folks who are continuing to keep this work going. A big shout out to Yolandi, um, wherever she is, there she go, for, for coordinating and it was, it was a lot of work for, uh, that she had to do. A lot of behind the scenes things that she had to do that no one understands, and this wouldn't be possible. So thank you, Londi. So move forward. It's time to eat. So I am gonna say, thank you, God, for this food. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this community. 
Thank you for everything, everything, everything. Amen. Time to eat.